Lawmakers are reacting to the death of Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein, who died overnight at the age of 90. Her death comes as Capitol Hill faces a chaotic rush to try and prevent a shutdown. A vote to temporarily fund the government failed Friday. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland has the latest. With soldiers, border patrol agents, and air traffic controllers among the millions facing the prospect of losing their paychecks. The bill is not passed. A plan to keep the federal government open failed in the U.S. House. You think a shutdown is inevitable at this point? Imminent. Inevitable. It's going to happen. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy tried to pass a spending bill with only Republican votes and lost more than 20 members of his own party. What is the logical next step, Mr. Speaker? Keep working and make sure, uh, make sure we solve this problem. McCarthy has refused to work with Democrats to avert a shutdown, afraid the far right flank of his party will push him out of the speakership. But with no breakthrough before 12.01 a.m. Sunday, more than one million military members will go without pay. President Biden said Republicans are failing the troops. It's an absolute dereliction of duty. We're not people. Alice Silver is the wife of a Coast Guard petty officer and mother of two in Virginia. Times are hard as it is, and a paycheck being missed is a big problem. We're normal people who really, really need paid, and it's not fair. The shutdown also puts at risk the federal WIC program, providing grocery assistance to nearly 7 million women and children, including Emily Church from Ohio. I have a lot of different emotions. I think, though, that in the end, I'm just saddened by it. And Scott McFarland joins us now from Capitol Hill. So, Scott, what are the next steps for Speaker McCarthy? 24 hours till this deadline. There will be votes in the U.S. House tomorrow, he says. What they're voting on, that's a different matter, and it's far from clear. He did rhetorically say maybe there could be a clean funding bill with nothing else added except he'd like to see Ukraine funding removed from what the Senate's working on. Now, that's a big thing to remove from any plan, and the Senate as bipartisan, strong bipartisan support for their continuing resolution, their temporary method for keeping the government open. But all of this feels like a conversation for July and for August, not for the last day of September with a October 1 deadline. I just want to pick up on what that lawmaker said in your report, that they felt that a shutdown was imminent and inevitable. Is that the general mood on the Hill? Absolutely, unequivocally unambiguously, yes. There's an expectation here of a shutdown and that negotiations that have begun or that persist are more likely to be for reopening after a shutdown begins. It's just too much stuff to do in 24 hours' time because the U.S. House is starting with something of a blank slate. They couldn't pass their own bill today. They haven't been able to pass their own short-term funding bill. The Senate has its deal ready. They'll vote on it likely tomorrow. It's a lot to negotiate in 24 hours. Not that there isn't a possibility of an 11th hour breakthrough. There's just an expectation it isn't happening. So what would an 11th hour breakthrough look like? <laughs> if that question was answerable, I think Congress would be talking about it right now. I'm not sure there is one. Here's the one prospect I can sketch out for you, that they pause this all for a matter of days. Forget months, forget years. They may say tomorrow, at 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Eastern time, maybe a little earlier if they're merciful. Let's just do 72 hours. Let's live to fight another day. Can everybody agree? Let's get this going till Monday or Tuesday so that we don't interrupt the paychecks of service members, of hundreds of thousands of federal workers. We don't stop the government from functioning, which is far from perfect, Catherine, because as you know so well, the federal government is a tanker ship. It doesn't turn around and move around on a dime. It takes time to adjust. When shutdowns start, even if shutdowns get close, federal agencies start to calibrate and adjust. Definitely has that sort of cascading effect. Scott McFarland, thank you for your reporting. Thank you.